cost of the coal companies, the stock price of the coal companies fell to a very low level. He went in and scooped up the coal companies. He is now the biggest owner of coal companies in the United States of America. What more do you need to know about how these gangsters operate? What more do you need to know about these phony green zealots? Now, you could look no further than San Francisco to see the same thing. We have people in San Francisco who are identical to George Soros. They go to these liberal dinners. They espouse liberal causes. They get applause from all of the useful idiots. And then they laugh all the way to the bank as they drive home in their limousines. Back up to... Uh, Pacific Heights, where they sit and look down on the peasants who are so easily manipulated by untruths. All right, my friends, those are some of the topics. I could see that you're still on trip to fame. Let's take some callers. Tom on KSFO, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Savage, on your issue on the special ops. I think uh, Obama's so sick. It's like taking a racing thoroughbred who's going to win the Kentucky and sending him to the horse meat factory. They will be slaughtered, and as you say, they have no boots-on-the-ground backup forces. He cares not about the training they went through. I think in a sick way, he wants to have the power to just send them into places where they'll get beheaded and tortured. That's what I fear. I fear he wants them to be captured by ISIS, paraded, and have their heads cut off on a beach. Never forget what this government apparently did to SEAL Team 6. Do you remember that story? What happened to six, all of those men who were put on that helicopter that got shot down? Do you remember that story? Yes, for sure. Well, here he's doing it again. I'm the only one in the media who said, wait a minute, let's not sit here and congratulate Obama for sending special ops into Syria. I think he's sending them in there uh, to, to get knocked off or captured. Because you don't have to be a chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to understand that a special ops arm cannot function without a body of troops behind them. What is he doing? He's putting them at great risk. It's part of the psychopathology. Oh, no, it's not psychopathology. The man hates the military, especially the military that doesn't knuckle under to him, of which there are only several small branches left. He has poisoned the tree of the military, and there are only a few independent branches left who will not knuckle under to him. One of them happens to be the special ops forces, which, by the way, are not fully integrated with women and transgenders yet. See, there are too many white males in special ops, too many patriots in special ops, too many American-loving troops in special ops, and there's no better way to get rid of them than to send them into harm's way without backup. You've got it. The only thing on the cycle, I said, there's nothing more dangerous than an, ina an inadequate personality. They spend their whole life trying to prove their power. All right, my friend, it's awful. Just awful to see things as they really are. Providence, Rhode Island. A second city on Tuesday withdrew its invitation for Rhode Island's dancing cop to direct holiday traffic because of his activism against the Black Lives Matter movement. The retired officer responded by blasting the head of the Providence NAACP and threatening to sue his detractors for defamation. This is another sickening story where the Black Lives Matter gangsters are now smearing that thin blue line. 855 i will be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. All right. The number one topic that emerged in this hour is that this crazy, crazy, crazy situation has emerged today where this idiotic administration signaled to the enemy that they're sending in special ops troops without any military force to back them up. Just sending them out into harm's way with no U.S. Army brigades behind them. Nothing. I don't think this has ever been done before. Number two, I've never heard of a president or an administration announcing in advance that they're sending a special ops force to a war zone. Number three, I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Rhodes or one of the other traitors in the administration gets up and tells the enemy the very day they're arriving, where they're arriving with the coordinates so they could sight in on them and kill them all. I'm terrified that they're sending them in as lambs to the slaughter. That's what worries me. Bob and WDRC, am I wrong or right on that issue? Yes, that's exactly my thoughts. What general, what commander-in-chief 
would announce is sending an army, let alone a special ops, into a war zone. And why isn't there a senator or congressman or even a presidential candidate keep doing? I mean, it's such a... Can you imagine the sad state of affairs we have today that it takes Michael Savage, a mere talk show host, to raise this very, very intelligent question on a radio talk show, a question that should have been raised at the hearings today that was not raised, such as, sir, don't you think there's some risk in sending special ops troops to a war zone without a military you know, backup? any military divisions backing them up. And moreover, why are you announcing it? Why are you telling the enemy what you're doing? What, why does it take me to do this? I'm with you, Michael. Okay, thanks. Why? Because common sense is missing. Everything's missing in this administration. There's no brains anywhere. It's all nothing but manipulation and calculation. But in terms of thinking, forget about it. Let's take some calls unscreened on the Savage Nation. We're going wild right now. Wild into the wind. I'm taking unscreened calls. WBAP in Dallas. Debbie, fire away. What's your topic? Hi, uh, Dr. Savage. I believe that uh, special ops have been there all along, and I believe that um, some, some of the guys have been killed maybe, and they have to now acknowledge that they've been there because the families will bring it out. And why in the world would we announce what we're going to do? It's already done. Okay, thanks for your opinion. I can't verify or, or deny what you just said. Next caller, unscreened, KSFO. Rod, you're on the Savage Nation. Fire away. Yeah, I want to make a comment on what you said about the uh, Russian aircraft being shot, by, shot down in um, Pakistan, uh, where was it, Syria? Um, oh, I have a very scary thought going on in my head of uh, us giving U.S. weapons to these people. Uh, it's like a Pearl Harbor kind of thing is what I'm thinking about what's going to happen. Are you saying that the shoot down of the Russian jet by Turkey over Syrian airspace is a Pearl Harbor-like action in order to trigger a war? Oh, uh, well... Thanks for the call. I think that's what you were trying to say. I'm not 100% sure. Next caller, Mike on WFTL. Topic, please, fire away. 30 seconds or less. Yes, Dr. Savage. I, I think the, the real reason is to put them in harm ways where the Russians will eventually attack special ops. And intentionally, this will create a chaos that we've never seen before. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. Oh, so it's even worse than I fear. That's in other words, really Obama is sending them out not to be killed by ISIS, but to be attacked by Russia, either by accident or on purpose, as a, a another pretext for war with Russia. Is that what you fear? That's what I feel. Look what they're doing. I mean, do you think Turkey did what what they did without the permission from the U.S. or what? No, no. I said from the beginning. I said last Wednesday, when the plane was shot down, right on this show, that Obama's fingerprints are all over the shoot down of that Russian jet. I think common sense would dictate something is wrong here. Thank you for calling the program. Stay on the line. We'll send you a Christmas gift of government zero. Back in a minute. Everyone with a sane brain recognizes that radical Islam is a threat to the entire world. Everybody with a sane brain recognizes that we have an insane president, an insane Congress for that matter, and an insane leadership in the entire West to waste our intellectual energy or our mental focus on the crap called global warming. Now we wake up today and there's a hearing in Congress about the failures to contain ISIS. Of course, there should be a demand for the impeachment of the commander in chief who lied for two straight years. Two straight years he lied about fighting ISIS, but okay, let's put that aside. Don't expect any reality. Now we hear that the great commander in chief is sending special forces to Syria. I, Michael Savage, as a non-military man, tell you this is totally insane. My opinion is that they're putting them in harm's way and that they're going to either get killed or captured or there's going to be a mistake or something horrible will happen between Soviet, between Russian and American special operating forces on the ground. Or worse than that, 
the murderous scum in the Islamic State will capture one or several of our men and torture them in public and behead them because they're being sent into harm's way without the military behind them. I've never seen anything like this. Why would you send 50 special ops forces into that area, number one, without the backup of an army brigade behind them, and number two, why would you announce it unless you want them to get hurt? <clears throat> this is a repeat of what Obama did with regard to SEAL Team 6. You know what happened. I know what happened. You know they were sacrificed because they took down Osama bin Laden. You know that nothing ever happened as a result of it. He got away with that. He skated around it like he does everything else. And I'm telling you as I sit here, I hope to God I'm wrong. I hope to God I'm 100% wrong. I hope to God I'm 100% paranoid. And I pray that the 50 Special Forces troops kills all 35,000 of the Islamic State. Now that's what I suppose... Spielberg would ha have you believe 50 of our special ops troops are so great and so well trained that they can take on an army of head cutters of 30,000 men. Oh, that's what's going to happen when Weinstein gets the film rights to Obama's military action. I'm sure that it'll be shown that 50 American special operators could take down an army of 30,000 head cutters. Isn't that the movie that you want to see just before Hillary runs for office? The genius who just said she agree agrees with Obama not to send in ground troops. That's amazing to me that it takes me on the radio to ask these questions. Not one in the media. No one on Fox News asked this question. Nobody on Fox News. Not one of the leg crossing, lipstick smeared skirts asked this question. The stooges in skirts. The empty suits. The empty skirts on Fox. Not one of them asked this question. Sitting there smiling like dunces. I'm the only one asking the question, which is why I survive in radio. It's because I ask the questions that need to be asked. Clinton agrees with Obama, not using ground troops to fight ISIS. Oh, bravo. Bravo, Hillary. That's such a smart maneuver. Well, Mrs. Clinton, can you tell me how 50 special ops forces will take on 35,000 head cutters? No answer to that question because no one asked the question. All right, let's see uh, what... Ash Carter, our great defense secretary, says about sending special ops into Syria. We have that, please. Let's play it. We're sending, on President Obama's orders, oh, hey. the chairman's and my advice, special oh. operations forces personnel to Syria oh, to support hey. the fight against ISIL. Oh, American boy. special operators bring a unique suite of capabilities that oh, make them God. force multipliers. Oh, they God. will help us garner valuable ground intelligence, oh, further enhance God. our air campaign, and above all, enable local forces that can regain right. and then hold Listen, the territory. This is some idiot girl in the, in the administration wrote this PR piece. This is one of the idiot drug addicts in the administration wrote this thing. It's like a college essayist. Force multiplier. Force multiplier. The plain, in plain English, you're sending 50 men against 35,000, you idiots, you? Chuck on WABC, what's your topic? Go ahead. Yes, I think the only reason why Obama is doing this is because it makes sense from the standpoint of the enemy. You know, last week you had spoken about the fact that uh, when they wanted to blow up the trucks, they dropped flyers to let everybody know that the planes were coming. And it's very interesting because my father, who was an Air Force bombardier back in Korea, actually won a medal for destroying trucks. And before they could destroy the trucks, they had to take out a row of light towers which were used to signal the drivers of the trucks. And now the rules of engagement say you can't do that. Obama is definitely ISIS. The media is definitely the Democratic Party. Okay, my friend, it's heartbreaking, but it's true. It's heartbreaking, but it is true. Never forget what the end game is of the or community organizer in chief. ISIS wants Assad out of office. Obama wants Assad out of office. Put two and two together. Friends of my friends are my friends. In other words, they're working together to knock Assad out of office. And so the fact of the matter is the only thing standing in their way is Russia. And this is what happens when you get mixed up in Middle East Muslim wars. The fact of the matter is this is just beginning. This is not ending. This, my friends, is not the end of the beginning, but it may be the beginning of the end. This man is so nuts. This head lunatic running the West is so deranged that he would take the mind of the world.
and distracted with this rubbish about global warming when the real threat is 